Hi everyone, this is Isaac Stein here from the Chess Summit Network, and I've decided today I'm going to do another kind of like openings explorer kind of post where I decide to randomly play an opening I've never played before, maybe seen once or twice, and then just try it on the chessboard on ICC. So here we go. I'm going to go with D4. Whoa, already that's a new move for me. I, you know, I, I like to play the English, but I, I would one day like to play D4. And of course, my opponent plays the Dutch, where there's only like so many things you can do against the Dutch. Um, so, all right, well, I think. Most players here would just play c4, knight c3, and then play for e4. How about I just not waste a tempo and then just go for e4 immediately? That way we get something that's a little bit different. I was kind of hoping my opponent would play d5 or something. Um, but okay. So here my opponent plays d5, but already there's a big weakening of the e5 square. So I'm just going to play, well, I'm just going to play knight to f3. Um, you know, originally my plan was to play e4, but now that my opponent's created this weakness in the center, it's not so bad. And... Um, I figure he'll go for a stone wall here because I don't have that typical counterplay of being able to break through on d5. So this is going to be a different kind of ball game. Um, you know what? He's weak in the e5 square. He has no way of easily kicking it. I'm just going to go ahead and put my knight on e5. I mean, the thing I like about the Dutch playing it against it as white is that it's really intuitive and it's really hard to mess up. Okay, this is a bad move, and I don't need to know whatever I'm doing to know that. You don't want to mix the Leningrad and the stone wall together. Generally, you want to go to that as a last resort to kind of just keep your position together. And I think here I just want to punish punish black. I'm going to go ahead and just start playing h4. I know this is a sound sack. You play h5, you sack the rook, and then I, I think in these positions I can even just go for e4 with my knight on c3. This knight on e5 is actually going to be a train wreck for black. If I can just sack, play e4, queen takes h5, he could be looking at checkmate really quickly. So, okay, this game's already, you know, pretty exciting for white. You know, I, you know, I, I, I intentionally tried to find a move that wouldn't play to my advantage. I think my opponent had no idea what to do. All right, so here does h5 still work? h5, knight takes h5, rook takes h5, pawn takes h5, e4. And now I'm attacking both d5 and h5. If he castles, which one do I want to take? Well, I do have to be careful. He is threatening the knight on e5. That's something that's usually not a problem in these lines. So I have to think, okay, h5, knight takes h5, rook takes h5, g takes h5, e4. Okay, so if he takes my knight, I can take on h5 first with check and then take on e5. He doesn't want to do that. He has he has to resolve. Um, he has to resolve this problem. It's probably castling first. Then there, I think I want to take on f5. So if he takes my knight on e5, I could take on with take on e5 with the pawn and have connected e5 and f5 pawns. And if he plays d4, put my knight on e4, and it's just really closed off. And I think the exact change is justified there. My dark square bishop has yet to come in. And the problem for him is if he does take on e5, he does weaken all of his dark squares. So castling king side, it becomes kind of like a monster. So let's just go for this. I know that this is a sack um, after d4, c4. You know, if this game turns out to be a blowout, I think what I'll do is I'll post on the Leningrad Dutch. I know there's a chess-based article that came out where it was d4, c4, and after black played g6, just h4, h5. And white gets really good positions with this exchange sack. So if this game turns out to be a blowout, my post on Tuesday that I would have done about talking about creative opening lines, I'll just do on that. But, well, I still have to finish the job here. My opponent, you know, he hasn't lost yet, but... You know, it's, it's not going to be an easy, easy comeback for him. Even if he's up material, the problem for black is he's down in development. This bishop is bad. And this knight on e5, him creating a, this square for me so early, generally you want to wait and you know, so that way your opponent thinks he might play d6. So you can kick the knight, you know, almost instantaneously. Usually I move like e6. Sometimes they even play c6 before playing d5, and then they commit to d5 after a knight's on d7. Um, so, you know, black... Definitely has some opening works to do, but I don't even know if there's that much he can do besides castling here. I mean, he doesn't even have the move bishop to e6 to cover his light squares thanks to this knight here. And, okay, my opponent's panicked. So, the key is in these kinds of positions, if you're kind of like a lower rated player, the automatic instinct move is to play a move like d takes e5, but then you have to start calculating moves like d4. Always look for those wish and zug, as wish and zug is an in-between move that you can make him, uh, like, you know, in between a sequence. Here, if I play queen takes h5, that doesn't change the status of the bishop on e5. So I'm just going to take here with check first, get my pawn back, and then I'm going to take on e5. This is what I was talking about earlier, and now my opponent's going to have a tough time. Unfortunately for him, he does have a lot of weaknesses, although I should have, you know, I looked, I should have looked at this a little bit more. I, but he might have to play king d7, because the problem for him is that if I take the, the, take the bishop on e5, and he takes the pawn on e4 and his king's on f8, bishop to h6 is really devastating. And that was the problem with him trading off the bishop, is he weakens us so many dark squares. And I think already here he might be close to resigning, especially if king d7 is the best move. If king d7 is the best move, I can actually insert queen takes f5. 
potentially. If he goes back to e8, queen to h5 again, and then take the bishop, and if he plays e6, well, then he's you know he's allowing me to play queen takes e5, putting pressure on the center. We're only on move nine, and I think black's totally just lost. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a way that he can. I, I think king d7 might be the best move, um, and that that's saying something. So. If he plays king of eight, I'll take his bishop. If he plays king d7, yeah, I think he he had to resort to this. Um, you know, this isn't so great. Okay. Is it advantageous for me to actually do the Zwischenzug, or allowing him to play e6 and regroup, is that too much? Because if I allow him to play e6 with the tempo of the queen, he's a solid structure, whereas if I take on e5, it's a little bit more double-edged. His pawn on d5 is hanging, which is something that wasn't uh, true of the original position. A move like e6, I can take either pawn and then win on f5. So... D takes e5, f takes e4. I can take on. Uh, well, I could even play e6, try to draw his king out. But I feel like that's a little bit too, too much for undeveloped pieces. So d takes e5, f takes e4, knight takes d4. Now pawn to e6 could be a problem. If he plays e6 himself, well then queen to f7 could become a thing. So you know, I think queen takes f5. You know, it looks good, but I'm gonna play e6 because after queen to f7, it, well actually. Yeah, because you can play queen to e7. I really don't want to have to trade queens because I feel like there's a checkmate around the corner. I'm just going to take his bishop. I think this is the smart thing to do because I keep all of my options open. Um, you know, I just talked about Zwischenzug, and here's a case where Zwischenzug, I don't even think, leads to the best line. I think this is this forces black to make a move. And by forcing black to make a move and resolve this structure, it's actually going to hurt him more. Um, he can't move the king back. You know, if he plays a move like knight to c6, bishop to b5 is a, is a is a move I can play before even considering taking the pawns. Of course, I though I think I would want to take on d5, um, but knight c6 I could play bishop b5 and the pawn on e5 is still there. I could still consider e6. I mean, yeah, this is this is every Dutch player's nightmare. So I think what I'll do for Tuesday is I'll find some games where black plays the Leningrad and white tries his h pawn march, and as you'll find with the Leningrad move order, it becomes very difficult very quickly for um, for for Black to find good moves. Okay, c6 takes away a piece uh, a square for his pieces to develop. The question is, where do I want to take? I obviously need to do something, or allowing him to take on e4 could let him get back into the game. So taking on f5 is a possibility. Taking on d5 though weakens him a lot more, and it creates a weakness. So taking on d5 is already I'm already a little bit biased there. Um, but does e6 work? e6 check. e6, king takes e6, queen takes f5, king d6, takes on d5. Well, no, I have to be careful. My queen could hang in that line. I think I want to wait on the e6 tricks. So I think I want to insert this capture first, and that way I have a lane for my bishop to go to b5. So bishop to b5 check would be pretty good. Um, there's no way to really easily force him on the dark squares unless I, play e6, unless I play e6 and he decides to willingly not take the pawn. So here, do I just want to insert a check, force him to play king c7? I think here it might actually be better to play king to, you know, pawn to e6. But then after uh, he takes, I don't have a clear check. I want to force him into a dark square, because if I can play bishop f4 with tempo, then he's busted. But I don't think I can do that. So I think maybe the smart thing is just play play the check, force his king to go to c7, and then play like e6. Threaten bishop to f4 and after queen d6, um, queen to f3 or something. So let's just go ahead and insert this check. So time-wise, we're still doing great. I got about 10 minutes. He's got about 11, but the 11 really won't help him that much. If he plays um, king to c7, he has to watch out for knight takes, uh, knight takes d5 tricks. Okay, here I really want to punish my opponent. So do I have queen takes f5? I don't know if I want to allow my opponent to go back to e8, and that's why I'm hesitant to bring my queen into the game. So maybe I just want to play knight takes d5 because my opponent actually has no moves, and if he plays e6, knight to f6 is devastating. So let's just go ahead and get rid of this guy. That way, if I take he also, he doesn't he doesn't have the c7 square anymore for his king, which is actually kind of annoying. So I would be a little bit uh, concerned, but I think there is no immediate checkmate anymore. Maybe there was something. We'll have to look at it after the game. But I think nothing really special here. Um, I can just play queen to f7 and then threaten to play a move like e6 and then bishop to f4. Maybe even sack that knight on d5 so I can maybe checkmate him between side castles. I mean, that's a long way down. Um, he would have to let me do that. But, you know, that's what that's what I'm thinking about right now is maybe a way to break through like that. Um, I feel like when you get the king out to square like d5, you can sacrifice material and still find checkmate. So, um, 
As you can see, White's really not lost anything for sacrificing the exchange on h5. The rook on a8 is still out of play. The rook on h8 is out of play. You might try rook f8 here. It's kind of like a save, but um, I mean, there's only so much having that extra pawn will do. I think at that point, I'd just play bishop to f4, queen side castle, so I have a discovery. Okay, so he's trying to get cute here, but I have knight to c3. He's not winning anything. Um, and having the queen further away, I don't even know if that's a plus for him because he's no, he's not really developed enough to, to do anything, and now he is one fewer defender for his king. So um, I'm not sure if that was even that great, and I just picked up a pawn. So I mean, if you do a pawn count, I'm already equal. Um, actually, that's not true. I'm up a full pawn. So I have a pawn and a piece for a rook, you know, which is a pretty sizable advantage, and I still have the initiative. So... These are all really good things for me. Okay, if I'm if I'm black, I want to get my king away from d7 before it's too late. But the problem with king to c7 is I have bishop to f4, and there's no easy way to block a discovery there. All right, so my opponent's just trying to just win a pawn right now. Um, not really too much of a threat. I can take on c6 with check. I don't want to simplify too much. Um, just part of the problem. One of the things I don't like about G15, it's so easy to just make the easy forcing move and then try to let your opponent try to figure it out. But, you know, obviously that's not a good strategy. What if I play Queen takes F5 here with the intermediate move? I know I temporarily expose myself to uh, my opponent attacking my queen with the king move because of the bishop on C8, but maybe I can make heads or tails of this. So if Queen takes F5, King to C7, do I have Knight to... No, I don't have Knight D5. What am I talking about? Um, okay, so that's not really an option. But, all right, well, I want to force my opponent to play b5, but the problem is if I play here, queen takes d5. Okay, so I'll just take his knight. He's worsening his structure. I can take on f5 next, and then just solidify, or I can play bishop to f4, queen side castles. Bishop f4 might actually be a more of a threat. Um, so maybe I'll just play bishop to f4. The pawn is really meaningless. Him playing e6 doesn't actually help his position. And the pawn on f5 actually blocks him from developing his bishop, and that's what he'll find with a pawn on c6, or a king, I mean... All of those pieces are on light squares. He's not easily going to be able to enter the game. Actually, king takes c6 might be his best option here, because then at least that way he maintains some sort of structural integrity. And um, you know, he, he protects the f5 pawn, but uh, I'm not too worried about the f5 pawn. So here, I'm just going to develop. But actually, do I have queen to h6? No, he just plays e6, and my queen's actually out of the game. So let's just go ahead and develop. This looks like a silly move, but the idea is that now I can queen side castle. I gain a tempo. If he ever puts his king on c7, I have discovery. And my queen can come back to f3 at any moment. And, you know, I could have played queen to f3 first, but then if he plays king to c7, he has time to run after bishop f4. Now if he lets me play queen to f3. He has no way to block the check, and if he goes back to c7, he's in trouble. King to d7 would allow me to queenside castle. So even though, like, there hasn't been a, a, a clear-cut, you know, mating pattern that I found, I made sure to kind of, like, keep him in this box, so then that way I don't lose any opportunities. I still maintain the advantage. You know, if my opponent tries to do anything special... You know, maybe bishop to e6 might not be the worst move here, because in that way, at least he's stopping me from playing e6 myself. Um, but then I think I'd queenside castle, bring the rook into the game, and it still seems pretty bad. Although, bishop e6, rook on a to d8, if he can get these two moves in, he might be okay. Um, which is actually kind of frustrating. Wow, my opponent's actually finding some pretty good defensive options. Maybe I should have been more accurate when it counted more, but let's see. The problem with queen f3 is he also has bishop d5, so I do need queenside castle, and then if... Rook d8. I guess I'll... Do I want to trade? Well, he'd have to take back the queen to not lose the h7 pawn. Um, I could also play queen to f3. Huh. Okay, well, I need to get my king out of the center of the board because things can get complicated really quickly. So let's do that. If he plays bishop takes a2, I think that would be a mistake, because a queen to f3. The problem for him is bishop takes a2 doesn't really have threats. And if he plays bishop to d5 trying to block me, I'll just trade off queen takes d5, so there's no queen to a1 tricks or anything. So nothing there. So I think he has to play like rook on a to d8, and hope for the best. Um, rook a d8, I think I, I might try to go for queen to f3. If he blocks with the bishop, the thing is my e-pawn can move again with discovery, so knight takes d5, and then maybe I can look into c4 moves, because he can't take with the queen. So rook takes, and then I play c4. He has no checks, and then I pick up the rook. I think that that's the way to do it. So after queen to f3, he should play a move like king to f7. But now, um, well, now what? That's actually a good question. Um, hmm. 
I think I have to insert a move like A3 after that. Okay. What if I play a move like queen to h6? Can he defend the bishop? Rook takes d1, king takes d1. He has no checks. King d7. Now this is kind of frustrating because I think I've lost my initiative actually. I think I got I think I got too careless. And we'll go over this. Um, but that's quite disappointing. I'm pretty sure that there was a lot more that I could have gotten out of that because when your opponent has a king on d7, absolutely no development, it, it's not right. But my opponent is making a lot of really good moves and making things pretty complicated. Okay, so how how on earth am I going to find a way to break through? Can I break through? Um, maybe move like bishop to g5 wouldn't be so bad. Take him on e7. Um, and if he trades, well, I don't want to play queen takes. Yeah, I think I'll just play a3 here. I don't want to lose this pawn. Black, if black is really aggressive, he'll play b5. Um, with the idea of b4, but if he plays b5, he has to be careful of knight d5. Attacking e7. So, he does have some things to consider. I don't think black has an easy way of getting the initiative. I think black can equalize easily, but I don't know if I get the initiative. Uh, but this seemed like busted a while ago. And part of the problem may have been that my knight was on c3 when my pawn really should have been on c4. Uh, and that would have stopped a lot of the funny business with c6, actually. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't really study 1d4 lines against the Dutch because I play c4 and that changes things a little bit. But I think... That could have made a small difference because the line is specific for c4. All right, I'm going to play knight takes d1, so that way if I want to bring in my queen to c3 or something, I can do that. I can also reroute my knight to e3. Uh, but I have to be careful, obviously, because queen to e1. Um, I could also play bishop to d2 because if he takes my e5 pawn, I can go back and then just pin his queen to his king. So this is an option. So bishop d2, knight to e3. I don't know, things are going to get interesting now, but his bishop's kind of stuck on e6, and the fact that this opposite colored bishop probably means the position's safer more than it's unsafe, um, but with his bishop stuck on e6, he's always going to have to worry about discovery options, but I think his king is completely safe now, which is completely frustrating. I don't know how I let that one go. I mean, it didn't really seem clear if there was a way to break through, but... Okay, well this seems kind of off. Do I get do I get to insert my discovery here? E6 check, cut off the bishop after queen to d3. I mean, I know he's winning on g2, but his king's going to be on a bad square. E6. If he plays king d8, I can play queen to d3, and I'm fine. E6, king to c8. I can play queen to d3 again. But he has rook d8 in that line, so maybe queen to e3, with the idea of queen to e5. So he has to take on g2. And then does queen to a7 work, with the idea of queen to b8? Yes. That, that could actually get really tricky. I like that. So let's throw in the check. What if he plays king to c6, though? I think it's the same idea. He has to take, and then I don't have queen to a7 in that line, but I could play f3 and then kind of trap the bishop. Let's do that. Let's see what happens. This queen is actually really well placed on e5. It, it can do a lot of things. I know it seems like it's on the side of the board, but it's stopping me from playing queen to c3. It's protecting this bishop. And I always have to watch out for like queen to e1 kind of ideas. So I've got about high five minutes, and my opponent's got about four minutes. All right. So here, let's try this idea. So the idea was queen to e3, threatening to e5, attacking the rook, and threatening queen b8 mate. So I'm going to play queen to e3, he plays bishop takes g2, he has no check, so I'm going to play queen to a7, and then he doesn't really have an easy way to block me. I think this is actually the, the nice way of weaving through and really asking black the, uh, black the question of how he's going to get back in this game. Because once I play queen to a7, the king actually has no moves. Huh. 
very not human move. Okay, so bishop to e4. Okay, well, what if queen to a7? How have you solved that problem? I, I'm not convinced you have. My threat's queen to b8. If you play king to d8, I can still play queen to b8, and that's checkmate. This pawn on e6 actually is turning out to be a monster. I think my opponent realized he didn't want to play bishop takes g, uh, g2 because of the fork. Um, but I guess the question for him was, did he even have to move the bishop at all? What about like move like rook to d8? But the b8 square is what's critical. So, okay, queen to a7... Okay, I'm not convinced black is anything, so I'll do this. He has no checks, he has no forcing moves, he has no way to pick b8. His only, I think his only way to stop it is queen c7, actually. And I also have queen to a8. Um, if he was queen c7, I could take the queen, but I could also play queen to a8. If he was queen b8, then I take his queen and checkmate him, so I don't even need the queen immediately there. That's a benefit of uh, being patient. I think this is a really sneaky way to win the game. This is actually a really nice idea. I'm not seeing anything for black. He has no way of blocking b8. He has no way of blocking a8 simultaneously. Yeah, I'm convinced that um, this will do it. So what turned out to be a really nice opening at first, I think I kind of squandered a little bit trying to be too fancy, trying to have too much show. I maybe should have done more calculating than trying to be too principled. But even when the position got complicated, it wasn't quite clear if black could play for a win because of uh, my bishop and the fact that his bishop was stuck on e6. I think a higher-rated higher, a higher rated player could have come out with a result in that one, maybe a draw or maybe even a win you know, if he can outplay it. But the problem is he's just got too many weaknesses, and I think here, you know, I was playing a lower-rated opponent, and I think it caught up with him. All right. And there we go. That's checkmate. So... That was an interesting game. Let's go over it really quickly, and then I'll come out with a post on Tuesday discussing maybe what could have gone better for me, because I think that there was a lot of opportunities. But I wonder if just by not having a pawn on C4 um, really made the line more challenging for me. I mean, I know one of the ideas to undermine the E4, so the idea was to quickly do that. But this move, this move cannot be fine, uh, because it's just it's too committal. You weaken the E5 square, and I know in the Stonewall you like to do that. But I don't think he really, really even wanted to go for the stonewall because he played for Leningrad. I think here, if he plays e6, we're going to get into some sort of weird stonewall. I'll just play f3 and then try to play e4 at some point. Um, but, I mean, now when he plays g6, it's a totally different ballgame. So I don't even know if having a pawn on c4 or not mattered. But here I played h4, he played bishop g7, h5, sack, 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 e4. This was just not a good principle move. Takes. This seemed fine. And here he played c6. Okay, here in the game I took and then played bishop b5, but that allowed him to develop a piece. And remember, when I when I said he played c6, it takes away a square from one of his pieces to develop. So maybe this was the first thing I should have noticed. Maybe I should have just gone for e6 here and not really doubted myself, because I am going to get bishop to f4 if he ever goes to a dark square. Um, so, for example, king, king takes... I could take with queen... Now he has to go to a dark square. Oh my goodness, this would have been crushing. Why didn't I do this? Oh, someone should have said something. Oh wait, now I'm on YouTube. That wouldn't have been possible. Okay, we don't even need to analyze this position. This is this is just complete domination. I mean, I don't think that there's another word for that. I can move my queen now without even have to worry about losing the cutoff on his king because now that's the dark squared bishop's job. Um, now what would be cool is if I could get away with this sacking my queen. But I, I just think that that's, that's too much awesome happening in one position. So... I think the smart idea would be to just play like queen to h5 and then reroute to e2 and then come through this way. If he ever plays d takes e4, then my rook can come to d1 and attack his queen. Okay, that makes me feel a lot better because I feel like I got to a position where I, I didn't really achieve anything. And, and that was that was the thing. I think I even said this during the video when I was thinking. I was like, oh, when I play queen takes f5, his king's going to move and it's going to get too complicated. Um, this is just one of those things you got to calculate. And I think here, there's no excuses for this. So he can't even he can't even take this pawn, which means that if he plays a move like king to c7, I'm still getting this move. And now. I don't consider this king safe. I don't think you consider this king safe. This is not a family-friendly movie. So, you know, I can take on f5, I can take on e5, I can do whatever I want, and I'm going to be fine. Okay, so that that that's a big relief to know that I blew it and it wasn't some weird opening line or anything, um, which, of course, it wasn't. Okay, that's weird. The, the game disappeared. All right, so let's go back to that position. So that, that was opportunity number one. I'm sure that there's many more. And then g15, of course, they're hard to find in the moment, but no, that one was one I, I definitely should have been able to find. So taking was the mistake, and I guess, ideally, when you look at a move like this, when they play like a move like c6, and they take away a, a square for the piece to develop, say that, 
know that, then look for a way to take advantage of that. And that, that's what I missed here. All right. So I took, I got arrogant thinking that having the bishop actually meant something. I grabbed a pawn. But I think by doing this, I thought that this was nothing. But it actually, it, it, it played too much of a factor in the game, allowing them to have this extra tempo. Maybe the move was, again, bishop to f4 with the idea of e6. I'm not going to have the same queen takes f5 idea. But I can play bishop f4, queenside castle, e6, and then rook e1. I also have this idea of taking on d5. That, that would have been a much cleaner win. Um, and I should have been less principled and more calculatory towards that. But I went for the pawn, which is kind of greedy. And my opponent handled this correctly, and he actually played really well here. You know, we we I, we, we knew that bishop to e6 followed by rook d8 was the right plan. He came up with that. I threw in this check, and then I had to save the a2 pawn. I played knight takes d1. I don't think that this is objectively the best move, but I just didn't want him to have a tempo playing rook to d8 after queen takes d1. And I figured that this would change the change the dynamic of the game again a little bit. And the one thing that I did say that did turn out to be a factor, the bishop on e6 was kind of stuck because of the discovery idea. And then here, hey, it just worked. So why not? And then this was a cool weaving idea. My opponent saw me going through the front door. He did not see me going through the back door. Um, and this was kind of like a breaking and entering kind of kind of mating idea. So okay, not, not the cleanest win for me. My opponent played some good defense when it mattered after I missed some critical ideas. But I am going to talk about playing that h4, h5 idea against Leningrad. And I'm also going to try to figure out for you guys why people don't play knight c3 instead of c4 against the Dutch immediately. Because, you know, if I can make my opponent concede d5 every time, it might be kind of interesting. Maybe the answer is that if he goes into a stone wall, I just don't have the tension that I'd like to have on d5 through the idea of taking, and then if the bishop's on d6, I'm playing knight b5 after c takes. So that, that could be a solution. Um... But I think it'll be interesting to find out because, I mean, I did keep the option here to Queen's Castling and it was safe. That's the important part. It was safe. So this is an interesting game. Definitely should have been played better. Uh, no excuses there. But, but uh, hey, that was a good time. So good night, Chess Summit. Uh, well, I guess good morning by the time I post this video. Uh, and, and I hope you guys have a good one. See you guys.